So I live in a community. The community is Athens, Georgia. I live in a beautiful, smaller community within that community. That community is called the Boulevard Historic Neighborhood. I live on Boulevard. And within that community, my smallest community is my house. In that community, there are four of us. There were five. Princess Zuma, the hamster, passed away. But there was Beatrice and Clementine. Those are my daughters. They are seven and nine. Mary, my wife, and myself. I have to teach my kids a lot about community in this world because in this world, they battle a lot. And I'm not sure if this is normal for two girls to battle all the time. But that's okay, they're relatively courteous about it. I was the baby of a family of four, all older sisters, so I was dressed in dresses most of the time. <laughs> Battling wasn't really an issue. Um, so Beatrice and Clementine, I equate to them and I sit, sit them down and say, let's talk about community and let's talk about what that means to me and maybe this is a community of our house and how we can get better. Um, so within a com community we have everybody who's very different but there's a common strain that we all have agreed to get along. It's a very brief social contract but it works and so this tacit support fulfills the social um, contract that we have between each other. They nod and don't pay attention and continue fighting. Such is my world. So, but this idea is kind of like I'm Cy or my house is Cyprus, and I'm the Canadian peacekeeper between the Turks and the Greeks, my daughters. Um, this is, I feel good, because the Canadians were in Cyprus for a very long time. Um, so that pretty much is my house. So I am a Canadian. I'm an interloper in the South. I've been here a very long time. But my idea and my French background in, in Canada and my living between Ottawa and Montreal between two beautiful mountain ranges of the Gatineau Mountains and the Laurentian Mountains, and the bounty of food that exists there has given me a really firm foundation for a really great understanding of an interloper of southern food. And southern food is so important to the community of the south. It's such a tome of history where other regions have virtually, um, have single sort of identifiable dishes to create their cuisine around. We have tomes. We have just an endless amount of information about this beautiful thing called Southern food. Um, so in these things, uh, we have that kinship or purveying, because when I grew up as a cook in Canada, we had beautiful local sugar shacks and artisan meats and wonderful local cheeses in the Gatineau Mountains and wonderful, albeit a very short growing season, a very wonderful growing season. We are starting to reconnect to things down here where those products have always been there, but they're being repopularized. And we need to take advantage of these things. And that, how we do that is we support our community. And you can support your community in so many different ways, but I want to talk about one person today and one farmer today who's really important to us and how we support them and they support us within this community. So um, I'm going to go to this first slide and just talk a little bit more about southern food. And so this is a, this is not what I eat every day, but I wish I could because it seems so relaxing. But this world of hospitality doesn't allow us such time. So this is a dinner we did in Athens, Georgia, in the woods, basically, at a potter named R. Woods' house at the time. And it was a wonderful spread. It was for my cookbook. And it is a celebration of the agrarian bounty of the South in this time of year. And it was summer. It was very hot. It was very beautiful. But so what do I believe in in this table? Well, I believe in the sort of the mosaic of the community of all these different styles of people, of all these different styles of food. And I believe in every day learning about all these things that I love every day because the more informed we are, the more we can act on them and aid our neighbor. And I believe um, in, this is a very key one for this idea and the person we're about to meet. I believe in not taking shortcuts and I believe in a little inconvenience goes a really long way in life, to in living a life that we want to be special. Um, so Southern food exhibits this type of community in so many ways, and paramount to that idea is this idea that we should know the name of our farmer. Such a foreign idea in the last 30 years as food has become so such an anonymous thing. It comes in a package, we open it, we eat it, we consume it. But I want to talk about somebody who's really vital to my community, 
as a farmer, and his name is Tim Mills. Tim has, with his wife Alice, Tim is wearing the overalls, <laughs> Luke is wearing the yoke. Um, this is not a throwback blacksmith metal shop or something in colonial West Virginia or something. <laughs> this, is, this is a real farm in town in Athens, Georgia. It is an amazing farm. They produce a lot of vegetables. They produce okra and collards and tomatoes and corn and potatoes and just a wonderful array of really, really good uh, heirloom style vegetables. Uh, they are not precious people. This man is not a precious man. He is a real farmer. Um, and, but he is a very, very, very special, special man in a lot, so, so many ways. Um, so, Tim, um, Tim's got a lot of pressure on him. So we're walking around the, the fields one day. It's two fields. It's not a very big farm. A reminder, this is in Athens, Georgia. This is not you know, far away. Um, this is a mile and a half from my house. Um, so we're walking around, and I'm talking to Tim, and we're talking about organics. And Tim is, is not a very outspoken man. First of all, he's deaf, so, or not deaf, but Alice, his wonderful wife, has to accompany him, and the communication is kind of like this. He was asking you a question, Tim! So it's a, it's a new style of communicating, and it's, it's, it's interesting, and it's kind of shocking at first, but you get used to it. Um, so Tim's going to explain about organics. Well, he's completely organic. Well, he's not certified, because the, loop, the, you know, the hoops that he has to jump through are like arduous and stupid and expensive. And the problem with it is, is that organics has been, become this co-opted term. Anybody can use it, and the USDA, blah, blah, blah. so it's a very confusing idea. And for the small guy, it's almost impossible for them to really get certified these days on, on this type of scale and be financially and economically viable for them to do this. Um, so, Tim, this whole while we're walking around, he's a really neat guy. We'll get to more of his neatness soon, but he's whittling away at something. He's got this little thing, and he's got this sort of nervous tick, and he's wandering around, and whittling as we go. I'm not afraid for his safety. He's been around knives all his life. Um, so, he sells to the restaurants, and he sells to the Athens Farmer's Market twice a week. Um, and Tim, could you pack up your vegetables and sell them elsewhere? I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that for Tim means I don't want to do that. I have no interest in doing that. To further clarify, he explains that if you pick like that, you pick fruit that's not ready. You pick food that's not ready to eat. Why would I want to do that? Why do we have to go back to a man like this for all the logic of our ecosystem? <laughs> I mean, I want to, but it's just, yeah, okay, that's in, that's really logical. Okay, so this is a pimento cheese sandwich. It is much what you brought, I brought very simple food today, and that's what you're about to have. It's not going to be toasted, but it'll be really good. Okay, let's talk about the pimento cheese sandwich and food worth for a little while. So Tim... Uh, a new place opens up in Athens, specialized in local food. It's called Farm to Table. It's, that's not its actual name, but whatever. But it's a term I don't like, just so you know. Um, but, so, this place, I, it's right, like literally half a block from my house. I go there one day, the gas station across the street, and the guys, the plumber guys who hang out at the gas station during the day, who have a little cafe in there that says biscuits, really cheap. And they're okay, they're salt bombs. So, the, the plumber guys are like, well, have you had that $6 sandwich across the street? It's a pimento cheese sandwich that's $6 across the street. And they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of angry, and they don't really understand why that sandwich would be $6. Because they're eating a biscuit that, though made in-house that day, has processed country ham from a large corporate farm. They have uh, margarine. Don't get me started on margarine. Um, and they, you know, the, all these things that caught, they're dirt cheap food. I mean, it's dirt cheap food. Those foods have nothing, nothing identifiable with a human anymore that made them. Well, the food across the street, the other little place where the pimento cheese sandwich does, they buy all their stuff from Tim. They buy a lot of vegetables. They buy the cheese locally. They buy the bread locally. All these things mean this giving back to community is a much more expensive process 
The corporates have learned how to whittle that out of the equation. They don't have to pay for our communities anymore. We've noticed that. So, but this type of system, this pimento cheese sandwich that Tim and I are talking about, and Tim doesn't make a lot of money, but you know where Tim sides on this? He's all for that $6 pimento cheese sandwich. Why? Because they're his customers and he's developed a relationship with them. And that's what we all need to do all the time. Okay, cooler than anything is Luke, because Luke is a 1,200 pound mule, and if you go up to a 1,200 pound mule and tell him he's not cool, he's probably gonna stomp you. Um, this animal is huge and beautiful. Luke, as Tim will tell you, is not an engine. Very important. Luke is a member of their family. Luke is a helper. Luke is a wonderful thing that doesn't break down because he's cared for. Luke is a member of this community. So, that's a yoke on, on Luke's uh, neck. That is the field. There's another field over here that you can't see. It's beautiful. Remember, it's in town. It's very cool. Okay. More cooler than anything, this is the mill house. Tim built <laughs> uh, this mill uh, because he had a vision from God. And then he had other presidents up from God, one of which he was standing next to his water tower, and he said, it, it hit me in the chest, you. And clarify, it hit me in the chest, the idea to fix it. And, well, he has welded together the back end of a two-ton transmission from a Chevy truck. The mule walks in the circle. Underground is a gearing mechanism that goes to the house. Okay. So a blueprint guy from uh, Delta Airlines comes in and goes, this is so cool, and does these wonderful blueprints. I love blueprints. These are up at Empire State South as art. Until Radcliffe gives me real art. We'll talk. Okay, so look at this thing. It's so like, it's like steampunk cool. It's like, you, you know, the internets are all excited about it. Okay, so. This is the actual mill. The grain goes in up top and the uh, gunmetal sort of shaded thing up top. Goes down, gets ground into this. He made all this. Okay, it can grind 500 to 600 pounds of grain a day. Okay, let's go back to those blueprints for a little bit. Those blueprints were taken and some friends of Tim's took it and have created a sorghum mill based on the same design in Ethiopia. So cool, because that means our community, which we've supported, because this guy's, this guy's one of us, has created this object that can be for $4,000 recreated in uh, malnourished areas to take the time and, grain, uh, and grind in like half a day a week's worth of work that was previously done by, like this with a shaft and a bucket. Impact. This guy has impact that he's never even known. And he has impact on my life every day um, that he doesn't even know. It's just amazing people like this. So this is going to Heirloom Cafe. That's the farm to table restaurant. Uh, <laughs> they're new, we're encouraging them. They're learning. This is the view out of Tim's mill house. The mill house is not fancy. There is nothing fancy about Tim and Alice's life. There is everything pleasurable in it though. They enjoy life. This is what they've attained and they're very, very happy with it. And that's, that's just such a beautiful thing. Um, you know, when we talk about what we can do in this world to further things is that, there's Tim, that's his uniform. Alice is not yelling at him. Okay, so I'm a firm believer in these there are three terms that are bantied around a lot and it's local, and it's sustainable, and it's organic. Let's clarify, because two out of three are being co-opted against us every day. Two out of three, we don't really understand. One of them, we do. So before anything, we need to be supporting the people in our community that we need to support. How does community support work? Well, it means that you can no longer lament those wonderful businesses that go out of business because you never went there. You know that place down the street that you're like, man, that hardware store, I loved that place. It was awesome. It was the last of the real hardware stores. Well, where'd you go and buy those screws? I went to Walmart. 
We can't do that anymore. Enough lamentations about life in our community. You have to take action and shop the places you should be shopping. Be pride, take pride in these things and make that move. So these things have impact and impact is what we're looking for. Um, okay, let's go through a couple more slides because I have more pictures. Okay, so local, then sustainable, then organic. They're all intertwined, but one begets the other. You have to go in that order. It's really important. But first comes local. We're still on stage one. And I am all for in life taking very little steps. I'm not a fan of the zealots in life who say we have to do this now. We have to change the complete uh, uh, diet of kids in my school who go to public school around the corner from my house. Um, we're not ready for that. We can make changes, we can make impact. We can't change everything. We've got bigger problems to deal with first. We've got poverty in Athens that's horrible. We've got poverty in Atlanta that's horrible. Um, I, we do a funding drive at our school. Uh, it has to be pop-top cans uh, so the kids can eat on weekends, so they can open their own food and eat it cold. But these kids aren't ready for the idea of the, they need to have an organic lunch every Monday. Their breakfast on Monday morning is the only food they ate in the last 48 hours. Slow steps, but tiny little steps. We make progress, though. And by making progress and impressing your community and employing your community and giving back within your community, what you do is you show the person next to you that, hey, that's pretty cool. Look at what they can do. That's fun, and we move forward, and we make bigger steps together. And we make a lot of small steps. I would much rather do that. Okay, so then, you know, Tim, this whole time we're talking, man, this guy is so cool, too. Uh, so, you know, he's whittling away, and he's thinking, and we're talking, and he's so mild-mannered. He's so smart. And he... He's just talking away, and he's talking about sort of social contracts and how they're going to go into the farmer's market next year, and it's going to be expensive for them, but they're going to do it, and the impact that, they have, uh, that the restaurants have had on them, I've been buying from him for 14, 15 years. Um, but this, and it dawns on me. Tim's the perfect example of this. Why? Tim's not only this farmer guy who I buy from. He's actually a restaurant customer. I have the most expensive restaurants in Athens. They're actually not that expensive, but I'm deemed as the very high-end restaurants. Tim is one of my customers. <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful relationship, but that's what it is. These things are relationships, and that's what community is built on. So Tim's whittling this whole time. The most beautiful thing and most simple beautiful thing is a person who just does things from start to finish on his own. Tim finishes whittling, puts his pocket knife back in his pocket, and puts a perfectly honed toothpick into his mouth. <laughs> he has been making that toothpick for two hours. Um, <laughs> may God give us this patience. So, and I'm an atheist, so it's a wonderful thing. So go out and support your communities and do what you can do every day because we're, we're all in this together. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.